This one was uh, interesting. Quite some drama last week on Twitter um, from Sebastian McKenzie, the original creator of Babel. Um, he called out the Babel project, but yeah, he doesn't work on Babel anymore, but now he is working on Rome. So it's mm -hmm. a successor slash competitor slash alternative to Babel. And I think it has just raised about $5 million dollars, um, for their new JavaScript tool, which is, wow, that's a lot that, that will power uh, the new generation of tools um, by quite a bit. So um, what's also interesting is that Babel put out a blog post earlier this week and they were saying um, Babel is running out of money even though it is used uh, by millions of people. It's a backbone of... Uh any apps and any websites now, right? I mean, I think it's fair, right, to say? Absolutely. Like they say themselves, um, it is used by millions. And uh, yeah, their blog post is called Bubble is used by millions, so why are we running out of money? And uh, it's I'm not that surprised by it because Bubble is free to use. So yeah, if free to use, you mm. don't make any money. So they are supported by um, donations. Anyway, so um, they basically write in their blog post that yeah, there are like three or four people who are working full time on Babel, taking, uh, I would say, really Western software engineering salaries, um, I think around 130K per year. And now they have to decrease it because donations are going down. And then in a tweet that was now deleted, um, basically Sebastian called them out and said, uh, yeah, you are running out of money because you're paying yourself $130,000 per year and basically you do nothing. Um, you you only make a few commits per year and uh, drama yeah what um, and you where do you so you saw it on twitter oh. yes so here is what uh, sebastian wrote but actually now it's uh, deleted so we also have to talk afterwards about um what he now thinks because i think if he realized he uh maybe fired a, a bit, bit too yes. too quickly He said, the reason there's no money because somebody took a $130,000 annual salary and didn't actually work on the project. Um, so maybe some dysfunction, and some dysfunctional things internally, I guess, maybe. And also if they are building a competitive project, it's not necessarily only for uh, technical reasons. It might be also for other organizational reasons. I don't know. Yeah, so that, from what I understand is, he assumed he didn't actually work on the project um, based on the number of Git commits, which yeah, was like, like 15 Git commits uh, in a year from Henry Su, the lead maintainer of Babel. So yeah, that made me think how much work is there on an open source project like Babel that you can do that is not being reflected in a git commit. Yes. Um, so I would suppose like organizational effort. Especially uh, a project of this scale. Yeah, right. So could you, I could imagine that this guy was actually doing a legitimate job and it would not show in his git commits. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it does seem... I mean, if he's only managing the project, right? I mean, at the end, because it's so, so big, it's more than a full-time job just to manage, I guess, such a project. I don't know. 
Yeah, it, it does seem possible. Even though I was a little bit surprised, I would have thought that this guy was like coding more on Babel. Um, so yeah, I can't really um, say who is in the right here. Um, but it is uh, interesting drama indeed. And so, yeah, the tweet is now deleted and we can also, we should mention really quick what he uh, wrote after that. He says um, he wants to acknowledge that he does recognize and appreciate non-coach contributions. He, con um, he also mentions a few things that you also have to do that will not be shown in commits, issue, triage, comments, support, marketing, documentation. Even though I think documentation would also mm. be a, a commit, but um, you know, he should not have called Babel and Henry out publicly and continued the conversation privately. He, I vaguely tweeted out of frustration and then decided to be explicit instead. Mm. Both bad decisions. Ultimately, it does not matter. And my tweets didn't solve or improve anything. Yes. I've deleted the thread, so it's not shared. Hint, he is sorry about the tweet. Yeah. So what do we make out of this? I think uh, I understand that... Uh, you know, these are such also high pressure situations and, uh, you know, that you, you know, sometimes you just react and sometimes you just send a tweet like this. So this, like, it's human. I completely understand it. But I think, yeah, it doesn't help anyone. Uh, so I'm glad. I think it's, and you see, you react, you send the tweet, and then after you reflect and you're like, okay, this didn't make any sense. And I guess that's why I deleted it. Because... You could also argue that uh, reflects poorly on him to, you know, send such an unproductive tweet. So that's also social media uh, is very tough for this, right? Where you, everything is boiling, and uh, I mean, these people they seem to be involved in the high stakes situations, and you know, and then you send the tweet, and um, but it sounds like there is a lot going on, right? Uh, in these like. Uh, organizations. Yes, what, what, what I think is that I think from his language, it seems to me like he still thinks that there is something wrong or like that he is very suspicious and he probably has more information than we do mm. as the creator of Babel. Um, and that his frustration is still real, but yeah, and he, that's why he's not part he, of it he anymore, could not, right? But tweeting out, he, yes. he regrets. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it sounds, based on what you told me, it sounds like, you know, he finds parts of the organization completely dysfunctional. And that's why, I guess, he's not part of it anymore. And uh, that he's doing also a similar, similar project. So it sounds like, yeah, probably not everything is uh, love and well and everyone is having a good time and... Yes, in in the grander scheme, um, it's also really interesting what's happening. Do you think Bubble has a future even? Um, because I have in Remotion replaced Bubble Loader in Webpack with ES Build Loader. It's twice as fast, and I don't need to use Bubble anymore. So for me, I I don't see it having a use in my stack in the future. Okay. So, um, I yeah I I need to check it out I uh, I hear a lot about uh, ES Build for instance I haven't uh, tried it yet but I heard the great things also yes um, yeah for me it's I just replaced Bubble with uh, ES Build and it was twice as fast and nobody complained that the projects broke so um, I think this will be on the rise really quick and I. Uh, but I'm also wondering, do you have any opinion on on the Roam tools? Um, so it's a successor to Babel. They are trying to streamline it. So 
parser, bundler, linter, type mm. checker, um, all in one, which seems to make sense. Yes. It's, uh, you can, all of these tools, you can probably connect much better. Is it what uh, Dino is using? No, it's something else. So Dino um, also does all in one, but it's different, right? Dino, they are using, well, they are using uh, TypeScript and SWC. SWC is also a amazing, amazingly fast um, compiler or transpiler, even faster than ESBuild, I think. And they are also coming up with a bundler. Really nice to see that people want to make these things fast. Mm. I think we only make the JavaScript ecosystem faster from now on after it. I think has become slower over the year. Mm. And so while the Rome tools will be open source, they have founded a company yeah. and taken on 5 million of venture capital. Do you think this could work out? Sure. I mean, I, I, I don't know enough of the details to... Uh... Uh, but again, like we were talking about uh, open source and making it sustainable. I mean, this is obviously uh, the heart of the matter as well. So it's interesting. Um, also, what's interesting is that there is not uh, like one clear model to or business model to follow, right? So making it open source, uh, how do you make money with it? There's so many different ways. Do you build a, so you build a company? Do you take on investments? Do you not? Depending. So it, there doesn't seem to be like one uh, playbook for making your open source project sustainable. Yes, indeed. I guess we have, I agree, we cannot say right now. We have to see what they come up with. Um, raising 5 million, the only thing it means probably is that they will come up with a business model for it and that it will not work like bubble based on donations. And yeah, it really depends on how they plan on monetizing this. But it's super nice that people now they try to... Um, so it's super nice that now people have... Uh, they seem to... You know, it used to be that maybe open source was like a hobbyist kind of things and then you you were trying to find ways after to, to sustain it through donations and so on or like or other models like support. But now that you, you have these new projects which are emerging where the business aspect seems to be much more uh, uh, present and thought out from the beginning. So this is cool. I think this is very exciting. I think it's a bit a sign of maturity also of the of the ecosystem. Absolutely. And I would be willing to pay for a tool that is like ESLint, Bubble, Webpack, TypeScript, all in one, but better. Mm. Because that's, I spend a lot of time with these tools. Yeah. 